Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Forrest Sauer and today we are going to be talking about something a little bit different than what we typically talk about. I'm going to actually walk you through a recent case study that we had with one of our clients because I think it would be very applicable to helping you figure out what's going on with some of your most dire thyroid challenges because the thyroid, let's be honest, it can be very misunderstood. It can be very complicated. I want to start clearing some of the air as far as the confusion around the thyroid today. And the reason why I make these videos is because there's enough people that are fat, sick, and depressed, and I don't want you to be one of them. So our client today, we'll call her Sue for HIPAA reasons. Sue had first presented to our office with hypothyroidism, some eczema, and headaches. She had major fatigue hair loss that had increased recently. She had weight gain that was unexplained. She hadn't changed anything and she wasn't really sure what to do next. She had she was on some medications. She was on levothyroxine, but she knew she wanted to take a more natural approach, a more natural route because she was she was taking the medication, but she wasn't feeling any better. And so she had eczema mostly in the ears and bad around the eyes. She had headaches. It wasn't a huge concern, but she had a headaches, uh, a string of headaches for about two to four days each and every single month. She had had hypothyroidism for 20 years, but the symptoms in this last year have become much worse. So the, the problem is getting worse, even though she hasn't changed anything about her lifestyle. She increased her medication last summer and she tried uh, she tried increasing her caffeine intake to have more energy, but nothing really seemed to work or make a difference. So when the problem was at its worst, she, in her words, she said, it felt hopeless, not in life, but that things will never get better. The reason is, is because her doctor wasn't giving her any clear answers, any clear direction on where to go. It wasn't giving her any clear hope that things are going to change. And I'm just reading off the the paperwork that we ask all of our clients to fill out prior to coming in. I want to know exactly what's going on before even sitting down and have a conversation. I don't want to play 20 questions uh, with someone and not have a valuable conversation. So she felt extremely tired at between 1.30 and 3 p.m. She had trouble staying awake. She had that kind of lull right after lunchtime. If I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but it's kind of, you just have this hour and a half, two hours of zoning out and you're in this brain fog. She was tired of having her complain uh, of her family, always having her complain about how tired and how cold she was all of the time. I asked her how this impacted her life as far as hobbies. She said not much desire to stay out light or do things uh, do things that she used to do. So she lost her desire to do hobbies and truly live uh, live with extra, extra stuff that she used to like to do. Uh, she felt like she was twice as old as she actually was. And she was young. She was 45 years old. Uh, I believe, yeah, 45 years old. And uh, she felt twice as old as what she, she really was. And the doctors say that they have no idea why this happens to someone. It just happens. And I don't think there's anything that could be further from the truth. She was diagnosed with Graves' disease in her early 20s. But looking back now, she wasn't sure if that was actually the case. Uh, she looks, she she wants to move forward and start making some changes naturally because she feels very frustrated and very, very helpless. Okay, so that is where she is at. Specifically, other symptoms uh, that she has is she has difficult losing weight. She has abdominal or bloating pain. She has food cravings, headaches, uh, difficult making decisions, fatigue, heat and cold intolerance, skin rashes, headaches, and joint pain. Uh, and so she's really, you know, uh, Sue here is, is really, really quite sick and tired of being sick and tired is what we like to classify that as. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I want to show you what uh, what her thyroid labs have been like since 2014. Obviously, all the private information is taken away here for, for HIPAA reasons. But here, this is taken back in 2014. This is her TSH levels. So this is her levels of her thyroid. You can see how it's starting to go up and down, just kind of like a roller coaster, where she's always having to change and tweak her medications like, like she did last summer. And that brought her TSH back down to normal with the levothyroxine. So that's the state at which 
uh, Sue is at. And so what I want to do is go through really the process that we took with her to start figuring out what in the heck was the case. And I'll ex start explaining what's going on with the whiteboard in the uh, right behind me. So this is the labs that we drew when whenever we start with someone, with a client, I want to make certain I know exactly what's going on. So these are the labs that I have taken with every single one of my practice members. Insurance is not going to cover it because insurance only pays for labs that they can medicate for. And so this is stuff that we take because I want to know exactly what's going on. Not only do we have them fill out paperwork that is more comprehensive than they're used to filling out, but we take very, very detailed blood labs. This gives us a very clear guideline on where to go so that way there's no more guessing games. So there are two different colors, as you can see here. There's above optimal range and there's below optimal range. There's above standard range, below standard, alarm high, alarm low. And basically what this is, is this is the yellow color here is preventative. Now, I'm only going to go through what the lab markers, she has some other stuff going on here, but I'm only going to go through the lab markers that involve her thyroid. But the yellow is her being preventative. So if it's above optimal range or below optimal range, it would not be diagnosed as a problem yet in the hospitals and clinics and insurance companies. That's what the red is for. So this is the truly preventative. Very, very easy way to see that is we have this optimal range. If it's outside the optimal, it's going to be colored yellow. This is for glucose, blood sugar. The optimal range between for your glucose is 72 to 90. And the and the other and the standard range is 65 and 99. So you can see how the standard range is a much larger range, much wider variant than the optimal range here. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's go ahead and jump down right to her protein. You can see that her protein total is low along with her globulin, and then that's going to throw out the albumin globulin ratio. Now, I'm going to talk about this in how it result and how it looks and is going to affect your thyroid. So your protein total, that is typically, when you're looking at functional medicine, that's typically a sign of low stomach acid, which is already a problem with digestion. And remember, one of Sue's problems was digestion. And so that is really where things need to start off with is if you have an unhealthy gut, you're most likely going to have an unhealthy body and most certainly an unhealthy brain. So fixing the gut, healing the gut, this is how we can get valuable nutrients into the body. That is primary and paramount. And I'll show you how we fix that in a second and how that relates directly to your thyroid. So let's go ahead and just write down, if we're taking notes, uh, stomach acid is low. Okay, so we're making a note of that. We can also take a look here uh, with your AST and ALT. That is specifically with your liver function. Your liver function, uh, the liver is like the janitor for your body. It helps keep your body clean. It helps your body process stuff. And as you can see here, your liver, this liver function, these enzymes are low. The AST is on the lower end of the range. The ALT is below optimal range. The LDH is below optimal. Alkaline phosphate taste is being affected. So her liver is, is being lazy, is what we'd like to say. And then we can take a look at her thyroid. Her TSH is, is elevated. Free T3 is low. Total T3 is low. Free T3 is high. And the total T4 is kind of right in the middle here. And we did also take reverse T3. We took the TPO antibodies. We took the T3 uptake. That's how, how readily your uh, thyroid hormones are being absorbed into your body. And we took a handful of other things. You can see the vitamin D is also low. Uh, optimally, I'd like to see that right around 80, but her vitamin D is right around 30, which is low. Now, let's also take a look at this last thing right down here. This is neutrophils and lymphocytes with the neutrophils here you can see this is at 64 and the lymphocytes are at 25 well 25 is the very lowest at which we would like to see her labs at and the neutrophils here are at 64 and which is above where we want to see that so when we see this pattern with the neutrophils being elevated and the lymphocytes being low that is a sign of a bacterial infection happening in the gut and we can even take a look at the total white blood cells. So the total white blood cells are low, or if they're elevated, that can tell us if it's been a chronic or acute. You can see that the white blood cells is a 5.5, still within optimal range. It is tending towards the lower one. So if I'm going to be a betting man, I would say that this bacterial infection has been in her gut for a longer time period.
Okay, so I did do some, took the liberty to draw this out because it can be kind of confusing when you're going through this, but let's go ahead and start at the top. Your The thyroid starts off in the brain and the brain start, releases a TSH. And remember, Sue's TSH was high, it was elevated. That's exactly what we see right here. The thyroid, and so this is her case right here. Uh, thyroid, her uh, Sue's total T3 was low and the total T4 was normal. That thyroid, hormone goes through the liver and this gives you the, your metabolism. So your thyroid, think of it like the gas pedal in your body. It helps control the speed at which your cells work. If your thyroid isn't working, there goes your metabolism, which means you're going to gain weight, which means your brain is going to have feelings of depression or anxiety, which means you're going to have brain fog. You're going to have all of these symptoms because your thyroid is not working. Losing hair, Hair loss, hair breaking, that again can be a thyroid symptom because remember, the thyroid controls the speed at which your body functions. So your thyroid, it goes through the liver and this is what gives you your metabolism. Prior to the liver, it doesn't really do anything. But let's go ahead and talk about this. Remember with Sue, her stomach acid was low. Why is that significant? Well, remember one of her symptoms was indigestion and heartburn and right here with the stomach how your body works is all the digestion starts in the stomach and your stomach is a muscle if you have a low amount of stomach acid what's going to happen is your stomach is going to have to work harder to digest so let's go ahead and say we're going to go ahead and contract this stomach muscle what's going to happen is because your stomach is going to have to work harder you don't have that much stomach acid it's gonna to have to contract very violently. That stomach acid shoots up into the esophagus, giving you that heartburn feeling. So how do we fix it? We fix it by actually increasing your stomach acid right here and balancing that out naturally. Well, stomach acid doesn't just simply digest food. It also cleans out the first two feet of the small intestine. So what's going to happen is when your stomach acid or your stomach contracts, it's going to dump that stomach acid into the small intestine, cleaning that out. Remember her chronic bacterial infection in her gut? I oftentimes will see people with low stomach acid with the chronic bacterial infection in the gut. How do we fix it? One of the easiest ways to fix it is to increase stomach acid. That way you can start cleaning out that bad bacteria that has overgrown in the gut. That's one of the easiest ways that you can go ahead and really fix what's going on with your stomach and your gut at the same time. One way that we do this easily with our clients is we have them start drinking apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is going to actually start increasing this stomach acid naturally. And it really does a very good job. We do, uh, we do, we have a whole uh, recipe with this. We have some cranberry juice, uh, unsweetened cranberry juice with some apple cider vinegar and some lemon juice and water. And we, and we, not that much apple cider vinegar really, but it's, we have them drink it every, before every single meal. So that way it aids in digestion and it really does a very good job. So I was going to talk about her gut with, with Sue's gut. Her neutrophils were high, lymphocytes were low. Remember, that's a chronic bacterial infection. But also her eosinophils. Her eosinophils were at three. Uh, eosinophils is a white blood cell. And with eosinophils being elevated like that, that is often an indication of a food sensitivity. Now, if it gets a little bit higher, it can be a parasite. So if it's in the 10s or 11s, we can start thinking parasitic infection. But if it's in the three, fours, fives, that's oftentimes a food sensitivity test. And this is where my brain automatically starts thinking about what food are they eating that they're sensitive to. The most common is gluten, dairy, corn, soy, sometimes eggs, nightshade vegetables. And that's why we bring all of our clients through a food elimination phase. That way you know exactly what foods are your triggers, not testing for your food sensitivities because there can be inaccuracies with that your white blood cells or your immune system can throw, throw those results off quite regularly. And so let's heal the gut, fix the bacterial infection, and then we're going to be able to start fixing her stomach. The whole point with Sue is really her thyroid had no problems. Her thyroid was functioning. 
It was everything else that was causing the thyroid not to function. If we want to start balancing out our TSH, let's start fixing the stomach and fixing the gut and fixing the liver because all of these have a feedback mechanism to the brain. So how did we fix Sue's uh, thyroid? We didn't fix the thyroid. We fixed everything else because that was the problem. This is the nature of functional medicine, getting at the root underlying cause of the problem. And this was her problem specifically. Obviously, I showed you those labs. Every lab, uh, every person can look a little bit different. And it's how you read those labs and what you do about them that's going to give you the results. And I just want to share the results with, with Sue with you because it was fantastic. She wrote us a nice letter afterwards. She said, Dr. Sauer and his team were extremely helpful. They're able to validate my concerns about my thyroid through labs that my clinic could not. How amazing that was. And it wasn't just me getting older. Everyone should be doing this program. Overall, my physical and mental health are so much better, she writes. I finally have answers and I'm living a life without headaches, so our headaches are gone, inflammation, and the unexplained weight gain. So it, it is just like whenever we start working with people like Sue, it's absolute pleasure. Absolute love this. But the big takeaway for you guys is, is if we have a thyroid problem, it doesn't mean that it's always a thyroid problem. Sometimes there's other things in your body that are causing your thyroid to malfunction. I hope this helps. If you have any questions or comments, post below. My name is Dr. Forrest Sauer. I'll be chatting with you soon. Bye.